Now, here comes the music. We are live, and it is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. It is fun time, and it is the question I always ask. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable here, and we have our normal uh, group, plus uh, some added ones here tonight. Uh, we're missing a few, but hopefully they'll be joining us uh, in a little bit. They may have stuff going on. Uh, as always, it's great to have these guys here. And um, come up on the 31st of this month of January, uh, I'm supposed to have DJ Rachel here too. So yeah. she's going to be coming in on the 31st. So we're going to have her here live on the stream and in the show. And then I want to thank uh, Braylon here. He's, he's going to hang out with us basically the whole entire month. And then DJ Brentley's here. Ah. Brentley is a uh, fellow Chicagoan that moved up to uh, beyond the Cheddar Cur Curtain in the Wisconsin and yep. is in uh, beautiful western uh, Wisconsin, right by the uh, Minnesota border right there in La Crosse. So he has some unique thoughts of being only a guy from Chicago, grew up not far from my old stomping grounds, <laughs> uh, but also uh, moving to a, a smaller town and having a uniqueness of uh, having college kids as well as uh, doing a lot of weddings. I've watched a lot of videos. Of course, we're always here with DJ Cool Thing, Hunter, all from North Carolina. Oh. And South Carolina. as always, Matt, DJ Salsis, the man, the myth, the legend. Always glad to have you guys here. Uh, first thing first, I want to start off with, we were talking a little beforehand, and we were talking about this, and I want to get the question correct. Uh, this is a question that was given to me uh, by a viewer on YouTube. And uh, this is the question here. This is from uh, DJ AGA4404. Uh, he said, I got a topic. I heard many clients complain about Spotify and iTunes DJs playing songs too long and pausing between songs during opening dance. What is your thoughts about that style bringing the vibe down? So I'm going to start off with our newest member here, DJ Bradley. You, you want to go ahead and answer that? What your thoughts and Pat, your thoughts are on that? For sure. When it comes to the interruptions, the stops, and all of that, even with professional uh, Spotify or iTunes, I just don't use it. For a social hour, like I was saying, if I'm doing a wedding, by all means, if I have a really odd kind of playlist. Otherwise, I am live mixing just about everything. I'm not, I don't want to take a chance. Even if I use Spotify and you know, use you know premium and all that, I just don't feel comfortable using it live to mix with. Plus, you can't, you're kind of now stuck with this, you know, the old school autoplay. Or if you don't know how to mix, you got to, honestly, what do you call it? If you don't know how to mix on a deck, you're going to let everything play long anyway. But at least now with the new era of TikTok and how people are all, you play a verse and a chorus and start to that second chorus, you start getting stares, you have to be able to mix in and out of your songs. And I found that. Even for lacrosse, as small town as it is, with college kids here, you really have to keep that in mind. I mean, both for my cl college club sets and for the weddings I book from that. They want a certain thing nowadays, and you can't give that with iTunes or Spotify. I mean, yeah, you can hit advance the song, but it's going to fade off in a part of the song where if you're mixing every song live, it's, you can, you're in and out where you want it to be or it has to be. So it makes sense. I haven't been a big fan of like ever using autoplay. And part of it being, being a record box DJ, the autoplay is terrible on record box. There's, it, it, it might DJ. start. <laughs> I mean, there's a point like, yeah, it'll start kind of where it's supposed to start most of the time, but it like, it might end on the first chorus and flip the next song. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. And with that, I was for like social hour, if I need to run away from the deck for a little bit, I record once a year, I'll do like a pop adult mix kind of where it's got a hodgepodge of just about everything. And I'll do that. And I'll do one without country. Just lacrosse being 
yeah, half the weddings I deal with want country and the other half are hard no. So I'll have a couple of mixes that I can run away for 15, 20 minutes, talk to the venue a coordinator, make sure photography and all that are ready before I head back and then mix back out and put what I have to put in. But I'm not a fan of running autoplay or anything because we're DJs. It kind of loses something about what we're doing. I mean, the digital age in itself has taken away a lot from the old double turntables and mixer with no effects and anything like that. So at a certain point, you have to be able to produce a really solid set, cutting song, you know, quick mixing, word plays, the whole nine yards all have to come into play nowadays. Otherwise, you're becoming the mom and pop company that slowly winding out of business, which I'm seeing a lot of in lacrosse right now. There's a few of the companies that are like winding down. One of them has been saying for a couple of years, they're retiring and closing shop. And this year he's finally made the announcement. And part of that and parcel, his comment to me was, we can't keep up with this next generation. So being able to mix is a big thing in my book about everything I'm doing. That's my two cents on that thought. What about you, Matt? What, 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 what's your thought on that question? I mean, if you're using Spotify is not a, if you're using Spotify or Apple Music as like a DJing, that's not DJing. That's just playing music, um, which anybody can do. So the art of DJing, yes, half of it is song selection. I mean, you got to have good songs and know how to read a room and know what to play and when and what parts to play and when to fade out and when to switch up genres. But the other part is blending all of that together. And you really just can't do that with Spotify. I mean, there are some mixes that Spotify is curated that will actually auto mix itself. Uh, there's a couple of EDM ones where the transitions are like, wow, that's can't even tell, but that's a pretty rare, it's a rarity now. So, I mean, I don't know. You, you see my weddings. I mean, I, like I said, I'll, I'll happily play Spotify and, and um, what else? And uh, Apple music or whatever for ceremony and cocktail hour, but, and dinner, but I'm not going to, you know, it, unless it's like a special song request that they absolutely want to hear that I don't happen to have, like, and I can't hop on Wi-Fi, sure, then I'll play it off Spotify. But I can also, uh, with my Behringer mixer, I can listen to my DJ mix queued up, or I can even like listen to that Spotify song queued up uh, from the Behringer mixer. And that way I can still kind of, you know, not excellently mix it together, but not make it so it's harsh and abrupt. Um, but I don't know. I mean... Spotify DJing is not DJing. That's just playing Spotify. It, it's one of the things, again, uh, DJ Fire's not here. I know he uses it for uh, a lot of his music and stuff like that. I know he runs it um, kind of like, uh, I, again, I don't use Spotify at all. So I do everything live. Um, I do use the auto mix. If I have to rent to the restroom and Tracy can't come to the area where I'm at, she's working on her side of stuff, coordinating. Uh, I'll put that on for like cocktail and dinner and run out real quick with instrumentals. And I've heard it and I know exactly what you're talking about, Bradley. Uh It is the auto mix on the software. The virtual DJ is just as bad as Record Box, just as bad as Serato. It doesn't know what it's doing. It's not us, you know, yeah. in the mixing. Uh, <laughs> so I know that, but if I got to reuse the restroom, uh, you know, I'm going to put that on real quick for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes to go run and use the bathroom and come back and always get their way in advance and get out of it back into normal stuff. But I know, um, I, I wish Matt, I, I wish uh, Nathan was here. Cause again, Nathan uses it much more for mainstream mixing and stuff like that with Spotify. So I would be interested in what he, his thoughts are on it too. Um, and again, pauses between songs. I know I've run it. I've seen that too. with people uh, complain about that. And it's like, how can I explain it? It's like going back to when I first started, not the first time DJing, but when I got back into it uh, like 19 years ago, 20 years ago, before I started the business, when I got into it with CDs, you started, you had those breaks between each CD and you didn't mix right. Um, you weren't really mixing with CDs because CDs were hard to mix and stuff like that. You more kind of lessen the gap between them. You'd be still had a gap there for a second and it hit those, those breaks. So versus um, get it into uh, CDJs and, and, and mixing and stuff like that and doing much more 
Um, it, it's 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 a hard thing, you know. And I don't know the skill set. What this what this DJ was talking about the skill set of those DJs he saw uh, that already that these customers saw and are complaining about. But I definitely would say as a professional, we, you know, can put ourselves differently and explain to people that we don't have breaks between songs unless we want to. Or which I'll be the first one to raise my hand. I've made mistakes. I've hit the wrong button, hit pause on the wrong wrong side by accident, not thinking. It has happened. We're human. We make mistakes. Yes. Uh, you you hit that play pause button once and you're like, oh yeah, here's the next song. Oh no, nope, nope, got to play and start again. <laughs> so uh, Braylon, what about you, sir? What do, what, do you, what do you think of the question? Yeah. Um. So I do use Spotify, but it's strictly only for um, cocktail hour. Um, I don't use it for anything else other than cocktail hour. And then like kind of like Matt said, those one-off song requests that, I mean, it's just completely out there in left field that I'm like, what's the name of that song and yeah you know, of course i'm not gonna have it um but everything else i have downloaded onto my computer so ceremony i don't mess around with that either i make sure to have the ceremony music there um and then when it comes to everything post uh you know like post cocktail hour and things like that and like dinner i'm mixing full through and through um i do think spotify is beneficial in that way because like i said i'm mostly a solo operation so I utilize the time during cocktail hour rather than live mixing. I'm able to go talk to the vendor, uh, the vendors, like the coordinator, the bride and groom, if I needed to, I use that opportunity to help me out. Um, but I was actually mad. I was going to tell you, there's actually this, uh, this old software that Serato put out that collaborated with Spotify. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It was called Pyro P Y R O. It's no longer in service anymore, but what it was, was it was Serato's interface to use with spotify and it actually did really good transitions mm. like between songs like it was smart enough to read the bpms smart enough to know what point to like have a song come in i used to use that in high school at the high school parties when my friends would just they like oh brian you're a dj no, like plug in do something i would just plug the app in on a spotify playlist and it would dj yeah. for me <laughs> it was pretty I, cool yeah i used to use they don't spotify. use it anymore though it's I, not it's not live yeah i used anymore. to use spotify with dj pro uh two like way back sure yeah but no, my this, this it was yeah. cool though it was a yeah, really was. cool software it was just like yeah. it was like a little little dj in your pocket is basically what it yeah. was and i was like yeah i was dj if this yeah. keeps going yeah. this is going to be a problem yeah. for dj yeah i dj a whole kids camp family night using spotify and it never gave up on me one sentence i guess because i was i was at a place with with strong wi-fi so yeah <laughs> well that's the other thing also, my, I, I know i was talking to matt about um hey guy. oh uh dj fire said he's sick hey guys i'm sick again but me and mike use spotify and there's a setting you can uh, you can use as one song ends 12 to 15 seconds before the last song ends and mix in the next song is a 12 to 15 second wow. start. There's no dead spots. I don't yeah, have to call it crossfade. Cross I'm, I'm yeah. learning it. So yeah, yeah, again, like before, I know, I know, uh, Nathan, I hope you feel better, man. I, I'm sorry you hear you're sick again. He just go over being sick. Now he's sick again. Hopefully nothing horrible. Um, and we have a, a, a cloud coming behind you there, uh, sir. Your daughter's got a cloud. Hi. <laughs> really? Sorry. No, you're not. And that, that that's that that's his uh that's his lovely daughter and uh, yep. assistant. So uh, yep. And if you see some of his videos, again, that's one of the things I want to say. Also, if you guys are watching this live, make sure you go to all their YouTube channels and subscribe to YouTube channels. A lot of great things. There's reviews. A lot of the, a lot of these guys have reviews. Uh, Matt always has his gig logs. Uh, and he every he Monday, every single Monday. Yep. There you go. Look at. It. And he, Haven't missed you know, one again, for a while. All these guys yeah. do stuff. I know. Oh like, yeah, I just posted a video today. It was my setup tour for January 2023. Make sure you check that out. I, I was watching part of it. I was trying to watch that during dinner. And at the same time, I was trying to talk to my wife. So I, I, I got to watch it again. <laughs> good, good setup. And I know uh, DJ Cool Things gone live a few times. I've gone live a couple of times on YouTube. And um, again, it's one of the things that uh, make sure if you're watching here on Twitch. You go to the YouTube channels, make sure you subscribe to these guys because the fact that they have a lot of great information, a lot of 
a lot of nuggets of information, a lot of great stuff. And uh, Nathan, I, again, I wish you a speedy recovery. I hope you feel better. And again, this I want. I was hoping you're going to be here, especially with this uh, question uh, with Spotify. Uh, again, the, the big question was a big part of it. The guy was talking about was those pauses mm -hmm. between the songs that people hear and they were complaining to him about. I don't think it's so much using Spotify. I think it's more or less you having those pauses and breaks mm -hmm. because of either not using the soft uh, the way you use it, the software, or uh, it just doesn't sound natural. It sounds too broken up. Or in the songs not working on dance floor, not have the availability to back out of the song because we've all have had songs that we played that yeah. it doesn't do well yeah. on the dance floor, and you want to kind of get out of it quicker than just you know mm -hmm. pausing and going into another song. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's one of the things that I, I understand it, but again, I think the main part of that was the breaks between each individual song, which. Kind of stinks, and I, I know uh, DJ Brentley. He he will uh, he will do uh, quick mixes, so he'll get it out in and out pretty quickly. Uh, he has a little bit of college uh, uh, amount of people there, so yeah. They, they, he does a couple. Of, he does what one bar or two bars. I'm at Animal House on the downtown strip here in La Crosse is my main residency. Okay, and I'm there generally two, sometimes three nights a week. But then I'll, I'm going back over to Stadium View in Green Bay, down the street from where the Packers play at Lambeau. And I'm doing that for St. Patrick's Saturday. Uh, I'm a, I do Icon in Stevens Point, Night School in Wausau, and uh, Lucky's in Winona. So each, each area is kind of different, where the actual clubs in the two, where it's more – I mean, it's open format, but it's definitely more dance music than anything else, being, of all places, Stevens Point in uh, Wausau which are kind of, you know, northern state, so to speak. But the, the owner, John, has two of these phenomenal clubs. And he brings, like, even Steve there from Club Killers, DeVille from Club Killers. And I think JB's been up there a few times as well. So okay, it's a, cool. he's got some really sweet clubs. But in every one of them, the quick mixing thing has definitely taken over. Like, it, it's not unheard of me to in a four-hour night to drop 200 songs now. It's really not. Where I'm playing... Me, me personally, I, I, I'd be like, no, sorry, no. <laughs> I, I, I like to have more body of the song. And, and again, I when I originally started DJing, I did originally started DJing freestyle music. So, like you know, I, I'm a big freestyle fan. If you, if, if you guys are watching me stream on here, I'll do a freestyle mix. And yeah, you're getting in and out of stuff. You're not playing the whole entire song. Um, but I'm a big freestyle. Right back. How far to drive to uh, the Green Bay from Lacrosse? I'll be I'll be back. I gotta get some shrubber. No problem. No problem. Green Bay to Lacrosse is about three hours, three give hours, or take. Okay. But there's a couple of cool places I like to stop and you know smell the roses, so to speak, on the path. So I'm all I definitely like. Doing, there are a couple towns that we stop in, get coffee, grab lunch on our way there and back. So here's, and, a, big, here's a big question: as a fellow Chicagoan. Do you wear bear stuff when you go to Green Bay just to make a oh, man? No. I've never been a Bears fan. I've what? never. Uh, when okay, it came Chicago to, cards removed now, sir. <laughs> when it came to Chicago sports, I love the Blackhawks. I love the Cubs. The Bulls, I. it was great until everything started getting trashed on their third victory, and that left a pretty sour, sour taste in my mouth. My neighborhood got demolished. And well, that's, the top those of all idiots. That's because of idiots. I remember when that stuff happened. Well, the top it off, I decided that I wanted to go see Leonard Cohen live the night they won the third championship at the Park West in Chicago. Someone in the back bar turned the TV on, and Leonard got mad. He walked off. He stormed off stage. Oh, wow. Made everybody wait 45 minutes after the Bulls won to come back on for two songs and was done. That was it. Oh, wow. So now here's a couple of things up on here on the questions here. DJ Fire. Possible bronchitis or pneumonia. Oh man, I hope you feel much better. Uh, I know that that could be really bad with breathing and stuff like that. Just uh, get better. And he said, when I uh, get feeling better, I'll make a video on how I have my Spotify play. Yeah, that would be really cool. And again, next week we'll revisit this real quickly with you when you're if you're feeling better by then. Um, again, I wish you a very speedy recovery, bro. Uh, I hate to see people sick. I don't like being sick. It sucked. <laughs> But you know, I don't want to see no one here being sick. But uh, if you, you know, if something like that happens, not a problem. 
And uh, sure. Deidre Adrian sure. E, which is another uh, I'll YouTuber. Be. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'll be sure to, yeah, I'll be sure to pray for you, DJ Fire, if you're watching. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hunter. Uh, DJ Fire, he's going to ask from how far to drive, ride from Green Bay to lacrosse. But uh, he is like myself. He is a uh, a White Sox fan like me. Uh, and he says, uh, uh, he says, drop him, bunny. LOL. He's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's humor. He's just, you know, he's, he's my brother from the South side. Um, and, uh, he says he's a Cubs fan too. <laughs> hey, my wife's a Cubs fan. I can't, I can't complain too much. And I give credit to the Ricketts, the Ricketts, uh, listening to, uh, them talk about their season coming up. I give them a lot of credit. I think they're doing much more than Ryan Storff is doing and his family. Oh, yeah. Sox. So we'll see how it's shaped up. Because yeah, the, yeah, the the yeah, speaking of the Cubs, our local minor baseball team is an affiliate with them. Yeah, they're, they're, the White Sox the have a lot of A, AAA, yeah, the, and yeah, the uh, farm Pelicans, teams. Yeah. So, yeah, the Merle and, Pelicans are affiliate. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Fire says, much appreciated, cool thing. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying a prayer for him. So um, I, I got everyone's opinion on this. Right, a cool thing on Spotify. I know you were talking a little bit about it. You use it for you use it for if you need to, and you use it a little bit. Yeah, for I use it back dinner, right? But I originally started with things like Apple Music, Spotify, when I became a working DJ back in the summer of 2018. And get this, I was eight years old. I started actually started with CDs using a boombox. Boombox and CDs. And then moved up to the MP3. There you go. Wait, wait. What are you, what are you eating? Strawberry, uh, rainbow color, Strawberry. Oh, you got, you yeah. got some for all of us? I mean, and the people watching? <laughs> might be a little might be might be a little trip down to Texas for you or out to California. So <laughs> uh so i want to ask the next question here um i uh sent you guys a picture including uh you uh out there uh um dj fire um and uh this is something i've had for quite a while um you know of course cds where we used to D cd uh dj and i want to get this so the light doesn't hit too hard so it is uh, jockey traditions. This jockey traditions, and wow. it is um, rock and roll mania. Uh, compact disc, of course, and it has wedding music on here, and it's uh, here comes the bride, the wedding march, uh, bride cuts a cake, uh, sweet Georgia Brown, Mexican hat dance, alley cat, let me call uh, you sweetheart, <laughs> sunrise, chicken dance. Oh, uh, chicken dance. Oh, I remember. No. That. I remember. <laughs> South no. is my hometown. Never on <laughs> Sunday. Uh, Tatanilla. I'm saying that word right. That's an Italian song. And uh, uh, what else? That, that's it. Um, and if I hold this up here. Wow. No. You guys can see. Wow, is that right there? Well, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, uh, the old school CD. Uh, no, this is dude. This is this is this was the jam back in uh, when I started my business when I was doing CDs and getting into MP3s because that was a mix. Um, <laughs> DJ Sauce is very cool. 360 cam I see today. Uh, Black Street back. All right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> DJ Fire. Um. But going back to this stuff, do you guys still have, have you guys been, I know Brentley, you've been around like I have been for, for a while. Uh, Matt, you've been around for a while. Braylon, you've been around for I business have. for a few years and cool thing. I don't think you have as many CDs. I do. CDs. I have hundreds. I have well, hundreds of CDs. Regular CDs, but not professional CDs um, that you had to get from uh, DJ stores, right? I don't have any CDs anymore, except for maybe way. 20 of them that are personal listening CDs. I, I just, like when it came to records many, many years ago, and I'm slapping myself for it, but I sold my entire collection off. 
at the point where I had to move it anymore, especially moving from Chicago up here and putting all my crap into a 26 foot truck, I really had to measure out how much space I had to move stuff up here with. And boxes of CDs, they got dumped. That was a no brainer. And just kept like my favorite, like being from Chicago, Naked Rig on the entire collection and a few odds and ends like that. So DJ Adrian E is saying, I have 10 discs set of DJ Tools, volume one through 10. Mm -hmm. Those are a deep, the DJ Tool ones. Is uh, That's uh, that. Uh, I, I still remember from promo only. I have a bunch of promo only CDs here that used to get the CD in the mail. And depending on what genre you pick, you, it's not like now where you go into promo only and you download the actual music, including music videos. <clears throat> but I remember with promo only, I still, I had the CDs here. Um, they come in the sleeves and stuff like that. You put into your professional CD holder. Uh, you're basically a big CD book. And um, it's, uh, it's very interesting. So Matt, do you still have some CDs laying around when you first started DJing? Um, I have CDs, but that was back before I started DJing because I didn't start DJing till college. And by that time, you know, everything was iTunes had taken off at that point. So, I mean, most of my music was acquired through iTunes or I converted all the CDs that I did have uh, into my iTunes uh, back when they had that option, which I'm sure they still do. But um, yeah, I did that. And I never got any like mixed CDs or anything like that. I never, never did the now that's what I call music or whatnot. Um, I don't know. I've always been savvy with finding stuff for free on the internet uh, in terms of music or, or buying whatever I couldn't find. Or I think I probably have like a couple of variety CDs, like party mix ones that iTunes had that were like DJ related, where it was like, you know, 20 dance tracks or something like that. Yeah. The, um, the Hot Tracks was one CD I would see uh, at the DJ store. We would go into the DJ store for music. Um, they would have the, C the big CD section, and they would have what's called Hot Tracks, which was kind of like promo only, and it was all the hot songs for that month that were hot radio play songs, and they had different genres. Um, it was, uh, I'm trying to think now, where did I go? I used to go to Jumping Music in the, in the city. I used to go to a couple different places. Uh, DJ Marsky, um, which is, yeah, he's actually on a Polish radio station, um, 103.1, uh, in, on FM in Chicago. Now he's back on, uh, but DJ Marsky, he had a store. Uh, I don't think he has a store anymore. Um, it, it's, it's one of the things that, uh, I can't remember what store it was, but one of them had that these CDs, and you go in once a month, and you'd have that month's new CDs, and these were the hot radio play stuff, and they had different genres. One was um, top forty, one was rock, one was I want to say dance, and the dance stuff was all different dance. So you'd have house, you'd have uh, um, you'd have house, you'd have some like uh, early EDM, like in nineties. Uh, Euro mix stuff mixed in there, so you can get Cascada next to you know Dead Mouse next to uh, Skrillex next to you know I'm just throwing names out there. I don't remember exactly what on those CDs. Um, and then back in like the '90s or something, there was like Daft Punk and oh yeah, yeah. And that, that, actually, Daft Punk would be on the top forty. It wouldn't be the in yeah. dance your music. It would be the top forty CD because they were on mainstream radio versus on dance radio. Um, it would be different, a little bit different stuff. Uh, Braylon, how about you? What do you, do you have any CD? I know you're you've been around for a little bit for the business, but not as long. Do you have some CDs or you're like, where are those so, things? Is that is that is that uh, what's a CD? I have is no, that a no, coaster? Actually. Do I put, do I put it, my it, cup on it? Put my drinks on, right? Yeah, no. Uh, so for me personally, DJing, I started, you know, I'll say I'm younger, so like I started a little bit later in the game. We'll say where technology was already at the mp3 files or like wav like wave files and all those different kinds of deals so everything was internal everything i've ever dj'd with is on my computer if like the actual files um but that doesn't mean i don't know how to mix on cdjs and stuff like that reason being 
my parents are actually they're dance teachers and so they have cds out the wazoo let me tell you and so some of like the music that they use we actually use cdjs at their dance studio um just so i can like play it slow the music down stuff like that um so i know how to use cds in that way but i've never actually dj'd live professionally paid doing it oh i i, I guarantee you have buddy i guarantee man I, yeah let me tell you but yeah I, that's what i did uh I, i'm i'm just like the normal old like to date kind of dj you know just djing off the computer having that and then having the software and your uh your controller and just rocking it that way there's a there's a dj who i know a real great guy um and actually uh know him from the uh disc jockey news chill room uh bill he still uses cds to this day he he doesn't feel that the software is reliable enough and he's he's used to it and again that's the way he wants to run his stuff i i give him kudos i think he's a cool dude i think he's it's a smart play CDs. You know, you have the physical media right there. And, you know, I, I, I give them all the kudos for that. And I think it's, it's, it's a smart thing to, for to have as a backup for our, my system. I wouldn't mind having a CD, but like my um, XZ does not have a CD, CD players in it. Um, my, I still have my 900 Nexus CDJs. Um, I would, I, I love those things. I want to permanently install them, um, do a studio, and then have them installed and then actually mix right here on Twitch with my CDJs and awesome. my uh, cool. 900 Nexus mixer and, and, and do that for uh, not doing CDs, but doing MP3s and doing music videos. But I love how the CDJs are. And that's why I like my XZ from Pioneer it is the same as my CDJs. And my first gear I started with, which I still have, uh, is Denon. And Denon, I have my dual CD player down below, and I have my digital deck on top uh, controller, which does do MP3s and actually has its own little hard drive. It's an HD 2500. It has a hard drive, has like a 60 gig hard drive, and you actually store MP3s on it. It was, it was like right at the cusp when, before software became big, because I have uh, CD uh, DJ Red, which was Virtual DJ back when they first started. And I have, um, that's how I started with stuff. And I have, actually I found the other day, I got to look for it. I found my original um, Virtual DJ disc uh, <laughs> the other day looking for some stuff. And I, I like finding some stuff and asking you guys, Again, I, I've had a business for 18 years. And again, before that, back in college and uh, out, just out of high school, a little bit in high school, I DJed on records. I, I, that's where I started on vinyl. But having like this stuff right here, like CDs, uh, this kind of stuff, I, I don't have tons of these. I don't have like, you know, stacks of stuff. But having a few of these things, just reminders, you know, just have that reminder and saying, oh, hey, that's kind of cool retro stuff. And um we have a uh, uh, we have someone said I don't have any CDs either. So yeah, there's 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 a lot of people out there that got rid of CDs. I don't have many CDs. I have a few, uh, but the thing is that you know, uh, I think I have probably more stuff for like Xbox and Xbox 360 than I do for music CDs. Um, but it, ton, it's, yeah, it, it's fun. I, for me personally, I have a hundreds upon hundreds of cds i used to play in my boom box when i started providing music for parties and stuff at the age of eight <laughs> so i do know what it's like to use cds <laughs> and that's the thing is that you know having that having that there again I, I, you know, I know a great dj he's awesome good he still uses cds he you know he loves that technology and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever everybody likes different things you know like for I like said before, I'm not a big fan for using Spotify, but I have guys here who love Spotify, and that's the difference between everyone. There's no right or wrong answers on this show. It's how everyone does things; they approach things differently, and that's why I like having a diverse amount of of voices here, of saying, "Hey, I do this or I do that, or I approach this way, or I approach that way," and this is to make it more rounded of a show, and having people hear and see what's going on. And again, I, I have to thank all you guys for being on here tonight. I appreciate it so much. And I appreciate you guys out there watching. And again, if you have not done so already, 
make sure you go over on YouTube. You follow these guys on social media, Instagram, uh, you know, on to Facebook. Uh, you go, you know, Insta is always good. Face is always good. Uh, they have a TikTok channel, follow our TikTok channel. I know a uh, cool thing in the TikTok channel. Make sure you go to your YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to that. Watch their videos. It, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of information out there. But also when you watch the gig logs, how do I do things? You know, when, when I talk to these guys, you know, off camera and stuff like that, I ask, hey, how, why did you do this? Why do that? Not to give them like a, 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 a bad thing. It's because I didn't understand why they did something. Or I didn't think of that. Why did they go? Why did you do that? What made you think to do that? Because maybe I'm doing something wrong. And that's how you learn. You ask, you post questions, not in a mean way. It's always a friendly way. But it's one of the things that you guys out there watching right now, if you watch this on YouTube, you know, next week or whatever, you have a question, you have a comment, critique, ask it down below. The question that we used tonight to open it, uh, everything up was a question that one of you DJs watching a show asked. And I wanted to have the, that, that relationship, ask questions. That's what we're here for. And again, you guys are live right now. I know DJ Adrian E's been saying stuff. DJ Fire again I, I, underneath the weather. And I, I hope that he's uh uh will feel better soon. So antibiotics or just go over that virus. And then, you know, anyone else, I appreciate you guys watching. That's that's the uh, that's the best part, you guys out there watching. I appreciate you guys watching the show. Matt, now I gotta ask you a question. Um well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about going into 2023. Uh, for this year, and I talked a little bit last week about it, uh, and you weren't here, unfortunately. You were uh, running around being busy with customers and stuff, which is understandable. Yeah. And not every week I can get everyone here because people have customers, people have stuff going on, family, friend. They all come first. They all come here. We don't get paid anything. We're here to share knowledge, have fun, and, and talk and enjoy each other's company. Um, but, Matt, we were talking a little bit about getting ready for 2023. I know that you do the CO2 cannons. I know you have sparklers. I know you have a lot of the, the unique stuff. I know DJ Fire, Nathan got some sparklers. He just did a review on his from Sheds he got, which a really cool review on that uh, sparkler. Uh, are you adding anything more to your um, gear set for 2023 besides a dual 20 um, or your, a, a Kraken? Dual 18s, dual 18s. They should be here hopefully end of this month or early next month i, I know <coughs> and, wait, one, one more I, question are you still in love your ld systems 18 inch woofer i love them i absolutely love them uh those are phenomenal i have a pair of them i used them this weekend uh for an event and there was about 300 people there and i ran two of those subs and two of my yamaha tops and i mean you could hear it clear as day from the back and it sounded phenomenal um those are probably the best single 18 subs you can buy uh, for the, not even for the price. They, they outperform ETXs, they outperform the KS-118, the 181, uh, whatever other single 18 RCF. Uh, I would love to put them up against Base Boss, still working on working with Base Boss to do like a video over there. Um, but in terms of tops, um, I've, I've run full circle now. Oh, so I guess we've added an all white setup. So kind of like you do, because I do have uh, a lot of the, we have a lot of Asian clientele down here in, in South Orange County. So a lot of them like that very white floral, elegant look. So um, I've seen some interest in that. So those Icoa tops, the 18, the 15s that I got in white, those are great. I used them this weekend. Um, but in terms of like special effects or anything, not really. Um, uh, well, I got a couple, I got some more up lights coming and then I've got like their, their six hexagon things on a six foot stand. Uh, you may have seen them in some concerts. They're like, they do chase scenes and other cool stuff like that. And they have little blinders in the middle um, and LEDs around the outside. So they're kind of like eye candy, but also dance floor fixtures. So uh, those are the only new like lighting gear that I'm getting. Um, I don't, I, I'm good. I've got four sparklers. I've got four CO2 cannons. I've got, you know, CO2 gun. I'll probably get another CO2 gun too. This one with our logo on it, but yeah, not much. Uh, uh, photo booth. Yes. We're going to get a baby's breath, uh, flower backdrop instead of like, we have the white, we have an all white floral backdrop and a, like a rose, like a rose red and pink and green. Uh, but at the wedding shows, baby's breath is like the new thing this year. Uh, and so people see that and 
I tell them, oh, we'll have a baby's breath by fall and their eyes light up. So uh, maybe for that, but otherwise I, I do have an announcement though. Um, I finally caved and I'm getting column arrays, but, but these are the RCF NXL 24 Mark II uh, big boy columns, not, not your EVs or your Evox or uh, LD systems. These are the full, you know, the quad six inch driver with a, the high, the horn at the top. And uh, I, I remember, cause I, I found them on sale uh, from KPO DJ. They gave me a hell of a deal. And they also agreed to repackage them and ship them UPS at no extra cost because RCF does not package their stuff well. And FedEx has a very big vendetta against me and they love to just throw stuff on the porch here. And so I'm sorry to uh, laugh at you, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's horrible. And I, I don't care. Cause like, it's bad for the companies cause they got to keep repaying. And I've tried when I order from Zounds, I'm like, Hey, I will pay the difference ship at UPS. And they're like, no, we can't do that. And so KPO DJ was very friendly and did that. So they should be here tomorrow or Thursday. And um, what was the, uh, you said they're the, were they NLX uh, R- 24A? RCF NXL 24A Mark II. Yeah. yeah. Of course, my blurry, my blurry yeah, screen. Yeah, those like right that. there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Those, those are, those look like beasts. Yeah. So they're, um, cause I, what I, my thing with, I, I always run subs. So I don't need a big speaker with a 15 inch woofer in it or a 12 inch woofer. Sure. Uh, and so something like that is more, sleek and streamlined so um, is that just like pull pull to subwoofer kind of deal or is yeah, it yeah on, that's uh, that's it's more it's more of a top a multi a multi so there um, is there is no top. quote unquote there is no quote unquote sub for this it's its own technical yeah, like standalone unit, yeah. its own powered uh, unit yeah all, unlike like i run the j8s which actually the top is connected to the bottom sure via yeah. a, a cable so and the, the the subwoofer has a, an amp in it and powers sure. the top and then and it powers the subwoofer down below so yeah i've never heard i've never heard of those so that's why i was wondering like are they like almost like a standalone like no subwoofer or right i mean of course you're going to pair them with your own subwoofer i get that yeah i I, i've heard those are more for uh those are more for like for concerts yeah (laughs) you know so (laughs) that's cool um so i i sold my i sold the eaws back um since i just wasn't i know i don't know i just didn't like them um the the other issue is that they don't have a high pass and when you run them through a crossover you really have to dial it in to get the right gain staging and i don't want something like that and uh so i i sold them and um i we've we've come full circle i rebought qsc 10.2s uh which are going to be my main speakers i have the white set for my white setups and then i'll have these for bigger events and that's and that's so it so dj fire is chiming in i have a friend that works for ups and he holds the packages for me um they get thrown all the time they don't care they get paid no matter what what has this world come to when nobody cares about people's packages this is true We've got a good, yeah. we've got a good, a good UPS driver here. And, and like I said, they, they agreed to take it out of the packaging and repackage it so that because RCF has horrible packaging, um, it's usually just a couple pieces of flimsy cardboard and they just expect it to, because RCF, when they sell their stuff, they expect it to be bought like on a pallet or um, they don't really expect it to get to consumer and grade through a True. big shipping network. And so when you pack a 120 pound sub, in a cardboard box with just some ties around the edges and a couple pieces of cardboard, of course it's going to get dinged up. Whereas like I pull open the Icoa sub, it's a box inside a box with custom molded foam. So that thing's not going anywhere. And it's like, how is a company that 950 bucks for a sub packages it better than a $3,500 subwoofer? Jose, I also like my, my main job that I work at, I'm in supply chain. So we deal with that stuff all the time uh especially like if our rcf comes in because they're probably shipping what because they're based out of italy right yes yeah, yeah, sir. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so they're based oh, overseas so they're probably sh- like shipping ltl which is like on pallets right. and so therefore it's consolidated sometimes repackaged and yeah it's poorly packaged so <laughs> that makes yeah. sense and it sucks when when it's like limited supply too because it's like with stuff like zounds you know if you order from zounds and it's something that they have in stock they can easily just you know, oh, it's damaged, send it back, they'll ship you a new one, like no charge. But right. uh, if it's something I'll, that's like very limited or you've been waiting on, like. I will you tell do. you this one. Um, my former life, when I worked for corporations, I used to deal with Estes all the time. And they're a big LTL uh, company. And Estes, um, a lot of times, 
they would mix pallets together and they would have like if you got a half a truck of stuff or a quarter truck of stuff they may have one of your pallets in the front of the truck and other customers pallets in the way and then your pallet here and another it's pallet so here. messy and it's all it's yeah it's so all mixed messy. together and i ran to that tons of times at estes and i cannot tell you how many times i had to have either myself or one of my guys with a forklift or with pallet jacks grabbing that stuff off the truck basically yeah. repacking the truck putting all the customer stuff together what sd should have done at their hub and making it nice for the next person to get it. usually a lot of times with the company i worked for i was the first truck of the day at set six o'clock in the morning was a, was a truck there from sd's and i'd have to you know have my staff you know i'd come in you're checking stuff off wait a second where's this other's pallet at oh it's in the front great pull everything off the truck because you gotta pull everything out okay mm -hmm. and i would be the, the guy the nice guy put everything back in there now you just for the driver make it easier in a driver but also easier for the next customers down the road and kind of like you know being the the, the friendly guy nice guy but i can tell you the ltl stuff um yeah that's really crazy and uh, dj fire says sheds is really good about packaging uh, their stuff up uh, really well, box in a box. That that's good. Yeah, a lot of China, a lot of China stuff is packaged well. It's it's just a lot of this. Uh, some of audio equipment just it's just RCF. I've never had an issue with QSC or even EV when I bought a couple EV things. Like it's just RCF for some reason does not believe in the foam or yeah. bubble wrap or any sort of protection. They're just like, oh, it's a I'm molded sorry, I, piece of cardboard. I just bought a piece from EV, and I mean it came really well packaged yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i was like wow <laughs> and when i got my mackies last year yeah they, mackies. Were, they were i love them but there was like this a good inch and a half of foam yeah around yeah. every package, package as well too and because the clowns who deliver not speak poorly of many drivers but the clowns who dropped them off yeah you could see they were having problems moving the 18s yeah of course but yeah and when it comes to the China stuff, I just got a bunch of stuff from Top Dance Light Factory, and they shipped it DHL, mm -hmm. but they didn't. They just shipped it in the hard shell cases on wheels that you're used for normal transporting them. There was no, I mean, so the hard shells took a beating on the way here, and uh, one of them's getting replaced. But I was kind of like, wow, you didn't even put them in anything worthwhile. Rock, so Rock I was Rockville. Rockville um... Like I, I bought the, the rock wedges. Um, I have now three sets of rock wedges. It comes in the, the rock wedges come in that rechargeable case, but it, the, the case comes in a cardboard box that actually has a piece of plywood on the bottom protecting the bottom of the box. Seriously? Yeah, I've I've like I have three pieces of plywood in my garage. Uh, in my uh, actually, in, in, <laughs> it sounds funny, but right next to my wife's uh, desk in front. Because I'm like, I want to do some of this plywood. It's not really thick plywood, like inch and a half, but a nice sheet of plywood. Oh, okay. I have it's probably like a little like, on it. It might be like a little on or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's 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 good quality plywood, and I'm like, because wow. I was about to say the shipping and the freight costs on that would be pretty high for like the dim weights and like how heavy it would be. So oh, but they, they, that's what they, do. they put a piece of plywood on on the bottom on top like inside the box. Yeah. And they they, they, oh, they, yeah. they protects it. <laughs> Cool. Thing. What about you? What about you? Do you run, oh. what do you run into with shipping and stuff like that? You or you um, order. You I ordered the, stuff. yeah, yeah. I ordered the Chave Wash Effects twos, and one of the boxes got damaged. And it was U.S. It was United States Postal Service, and they they're the ones shipping to the house. Yeah, but but frankly, the light still works. That's the yeah. important stuff, and that, that that you know to me. The outside of the box being taking the brunt of the damage and protecting what's inside. I don't care what the outside of the box is. Make sure my equipment is in good order, in good shape. Just like if I bring something in for service and you need to ship it out, you know, that should be shipped. You know, if you got to ship something out back to the manufacturer for whatever reason, it comes back and there's dents in the grill. You need to replace my grill. I, I I dropped off. I'm still waiting for my RCFs. I had drop off before Christmas because I uh, dropped them off a cart. Yeah, I remember so that. I got to pay my stupid tax, like nine hundred dollars. I got paid for yeah. repair for my speakers because of my mistake. Um, 
they're in for service and they actually had to send one of them to RCF in New Jersey. So I'm waiting for that to come back from New Jersey. I'm hoping, I think they would have, you know, basically packaged up really nicely and protected as much as possible when you ship in New Jersey. Uh, DJ Fire says, with all the packages that I get from my review channel, I have had two packages stolen. So now I have all my packages held at UPS Hub and I go get wow. them when they mm-hmm. arrive. That might be another way of doing it if you know where your UPS up, if you can do it. It, it all boils time. Uh, DJ Fire, uh, Nathan has a couple of businesses, uh, a couple and like, you know, four channels, he four channels he runs. Uh, DJ, say there, DJ Mike James, uh, another great DJ that's on here. Um, he also um, has his stuff held uh, by UPS and go and grabs it because of the fact that they've had problems with either stuff being stolen or damaged. And it seems to reduce that amount of damage because they're not moving it from truck to truck to truck. It's basically just right there from the grab. And as well, it's unfortunately, uh, Nathan has had a couple of things uh, taken from him, which is sad that uh, people take stuff or have a P.O. box. Ah, but P.O. boxes, you can't always receive stuff. Live- UPS, FedEx, you can't send to a P.O. box. Yeah. yeah, yeah and U.S. See- mail will, but if you have U- FedEx or UPS, you need a physical address. And um, being in lacrosse, the meth capital of my of Western Wisconsin, people p- packages get jacked here almost daily. If you look on like local Facebook groups or that next door site, it is so common. I have signs on both the door behind me here and the window here. Put them behind the gate and ring my doorbell because ninety nine point nine percent of the time, if it's before three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm gonna be home. Just ring the doorbell, let me take my packages in. But there's been a few instances where they've just thrown them up my doorstep. I get the you know notification, run outside, and the thing's already gone. Like one of my laptop stands I ordered last year, so I want to know the Odyssey 360. It, it, it couldn't have been three minutes from the time I got the notification until I went outside and the packages had been jacked. Oh, no, no, no don't, don't, get it wrong, don't take it the wrong way. That, never mind then. Um, you know, it is a good, it is a good idea. If you get something from the postal service, if you have something delivered to your postal service to a PO box, it doesn't matter the size of package, the desk will hold it for you. Yep. So if you have a big box being shipped via postal service to your, to your PO box, <coughs> I have a PO box for business. Um, they will hold it at the desk for you. They'll put a note in your PO box saying that you have a large package held at desk. You go to the desk and you ask for your package. Lines are open. If you go there off hour, you're not going to run into that. But again, yeah. it's a good thought. It is a good thought. Don't think it, there's never a bad thought here or a bad thing to say. And again, thank you so much for talking in the chat. I appreciate you guys down there chatting. Uh, DJ Fire says UPS and FedEx uh, do uh, send stuff to post office with a program call. Yeah, UPS, uh, Sure Post, and, you know, Smart Post with FedEx. Yes. And they have that, I hate that. That, prolonged shipping so bad uh ups brings the packages to the post office and uh usps does the fun yeah they do the fi- what's called final mile delivery um uh, and, and amazon also does the post office too amazon sometimes you order stuff through amazon the they don't deliver amazon doesn't deliver everywhere because they don't trucks everywhere just like ups effects doesn't but the united states postal service is a constitutional department it is by it is part of the constitution and because of that, they have to deliver by law to every single zip code, every single physical address. That's by law they have to deliver that. So that's why a lot of times UPS, FedEx, Amazon, a lot of these companies will use it for final mile delivery is the postal service. So it is a, it is a part of the mix. And again, if with the PO box, I don't know the final mile with the you know the 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 shared stuff and they'll keep it there but if you go directly through US Postal Service they definitely will keep your stuff there for the PO box and that's 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 a you know a great information right there um so now wow this this hour's gone by so fast it's not even funny oh, uh i'm addicted to amazon and <laughs> so are all we <laughs> i think dj fires probably <laughs> Amazon's poster boy here, but I think all of us here as DJs can say, yeah, we, I, I can't tell me ca- cables I buy through Amazon. Matt, you know, you probably buy tons yeah, of stuff. I, I buy a lot from, yeah, I buy a lot from Amazon. Cool thing. <laughs> yeah. Raylan, you're Amazon, right? 
your team. I, Brentley, I got the prime Amazon, credit card. I can buy, I'm about to send off everything. For sure, but uh, yeah. Not mm-hmm. not necessarily DJ stuff though. I don't really usually get DJ stuff off Amazon. I prefer to go through actual like retailers for DJ stuff. Nah, well, okay, some cables. cables. Some they, they, some some of the cables they really no. Good. Sometimes yeah, like hose cables and stuff like that. They have those, but yeah, stuff, stuff you know you yeah. stuff you know you can get. And then right. um, uh, DJ Brentley, I see you got your assistant back with you again. <laughs> <laughs> Does she want to come and say hi to everyone? Come on, come on, kid. Come on, say hi. Hi. This is hi. Mira, everyone. And Baby, then- out. Yeah. And that's our oh. one of our shepherds. There, yeah, yeah. I have the puppy in there too. I, my my puppy, yep. I hear her running back and forth. So she just <laughs> she just turned a year on January 9th. So she's uh she was running around here earlier. Tracy decided to close the door so that way she's not uh, barking and coming to here every five seconds going, "Hey, what are you doing, Dad? What are you doing, Dad? What are you doing, Dad?" <laughs> well, in my house, we got five cats. I was keeping. Oh wow. I, I see sometimes your cats on your on your live streams and stuff like that. It's always cool to have pets. And uh, Matt, you got you got you got cats, right? We have one. We had three earlier this, earlier last year. Two of them died like Two within passed. three weeks of each other. Yeah, I mean you, they were uh, they were you, nineteen, Braylon? so they had cancer. Oh, uh, sorry to hear that. What about you, Braylon? I have oh got I got one dog. Uh, Little uh, little labradoodle. She's pretty cool. She's about I think two, just over two. So she's awesome. I'm scared of dogs, so that's why we have cats. I'm scared of dogs. No, that's I'm fine. I'm terrified. It, it, that that's that's the. Uh, it, it's kind of funny because I got watch Braylon and DJ Brentley because it's like yeah, it's it's and, tough. And, I know we've both know, been like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know both of you guys are like huh? huh which way is going? Which way is it going? <laughs> Um, but again, I gotta thank the panel all here for being here tonight. DJ Cool Thing, Hunter, I appreciate it. Matt, DJ Salsa, Braylon with with Funky Town Entertainment, all the way from beautiful Texas, and as well as all the way from La Crosse, Wisconsin, <laughs> fellow Chicagoan, but not a Bears fan. Ooh. The Bears. Oh man, we used to fans. When's the last time Bears hey, were even in the playoffs? Wait, how about them Cowboys yesterday? <laughs> The Cowboys, I thought they were pretty good. I, I, I actually, I here's liked, the deal. I, I, I like them. I, I thought they did pretty well. And I'm not, Here. I'm not a big fan for the ownership. I, I just think he's very in your face. But it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because right. what he has done there for the Cowboys, and what he did at the stadium, everything like that. I hope that the Bears, I don't think the Ricketts will do it. I'm not the Ricketts, uh, the Caskies who own the Bears will do exactly. But if I owned the Bears, I would have copied exactly what he did there in Texas with the hotels sure. and the stadium sure. and the training uh, center, all the area. And they, they just bought, uh, mm-hmm. they just bought Arlington Park Racetrack. Uh, and they're going to move from downtown Chicago from Soldier Field to Arlington uh, Park, Arlington Heights, uh, Arlington Park Racetrack, all the places. Oh, wow. And then oh, I got the yeah. Fly Eagles Fly. The Philly Eagles, yeah, the Eagles, they, they do, they're doing good. And, you know, this past weekend, all the uh, the wild card t- games, the one game, and I'm sorry to say this, my, one of my best friends is a big, huge Vikings fan. Yeah. But I was glad that they got knocked yeah. out because I'm a Tough. Bears fan, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, Darren. Yeah. I know you're my friend. I'm sorry. He's gonna watch this. He's gonna, he's gonna yell at me. <laughs> Can't trust Kirk Cousins. <laughs> but yeah, I and uh, I, I was surprised. I was surprised the, the Chargers. Um, yeah, was, I thought they uh, did a good job too. They 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 fought with that Blackhawks. <laughs> there you go. Wrong sport. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, but still, it's Chicago. It's still Chicago. I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him points for it. Yeah. It's so still guys. Chicago. I want to thank you guys out there for watching. Don't forget, we will be back here next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Central Time, with our cast here, with our fun people. And I want to thank you again. If you guys have a comment, question, go over to the YouTube channel. Uh, this video will be up here, up on YouTube next week. If you're watching on YouTube, contact, uh, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, critiques, criticisms, any kind of content information, anything you guys have a question on, Pose it in the down below. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I appreciate you guys. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of this week. See you later. All right.